time, and now we are down to our last session. Session four is a workshop on human city design. And the first workshop was conducted in 2019, and the year 2020 marks its second anniversary. It aims to discuss and distribute the value of human city design with up-and-coming young designers, so it's a very special session. And we have two video presentations of workshops prepared for us. The first workshop is titled Designing New Way of Being. It will be delivered by Mr. John Thakara. Let's listen to his workshop. Good evening. This is John Thakara speaking to you from my home in France. And I'm most honored by your invitation uh, to, to address the second Human City Design Award. The award is about designs for an urban ecosystem in which human and nature coexist. And for the first time in this award, we begin to experience a city in which is not about them and us, people and nature, but where there is only us. This is a tremendous change in the way we think about and inhabit and develop our cities. So in preparing these few words today, um, I search for an example of humans and nature coexisting that would be easy to recognize and which uh, would provide a meaningful uh, context of connection between Korea and the rest of the world. So I came up with the idea of talking briefly about kimchi, which you can see here on my desk in France. Uh, the reason is that um, for thousands of years, the arts of kimchi have transformed and preserved food and food cultures in many, many different cultures. But in recent times, especially pre-COVID, uh, many of us got accustomed to moving so fast and constantly around the world from place to place that for much of the time we did not connect deeply uh, with the people and places we visited. The result? We often felt rootless, fragmented and isolated. The French philosopher Simone Weil wrote memorably about our need for roots. Rootedness in a place is the most important and least recognized need of the human soul, she wrote. A human being has roots, she said, by virtue of her real, active and natural participation in the life of a community. She called this the lived participation in a place. For the American ecologist Pamela Mang, another muse of mine, the power of connection between people and place is what makes a shift to true sustainability possible. Place is a doorway into caring, wrote Pamela Mang. Love of place unleashes the personal and political will that's needed to make the profound changes that we need. Place can also unite people across diverse ideological positions. Place is what we all share, and therefore it can be the commons that allows people to call themselves a community and act to help the community thrive. We've lost a lot of those senses of connection and rootedness, but one of the places where it is most acute is in the matter of food. But it is also through food that we can reconnect. As we became more mobile, or many of us, we lost contact with and empathy for the biological or cultural origins of what we were eating. We became especially ignorant of how food was grown and harvested, by whom, and where. In my own travels over many years, I learned that fermentation is a great medium of conversation with people and place. I've been shown different techniques and traditions by hosts in different countries uh, that were able to take uh, food through time into the hardships of winter and the less fertile seasons. But these encounters and conversations have never been more vivid than in my visit to Korea. And on one visit to the country, someone told me that kimchi that we were eating at the time was a great way to connect with the microorganisms of that particular place. I've never forgotten those words. So kimchi and the bacteria and the processes that are contained is a medium of connection with place and also with the people in that place. And I must say that, uh, you know, one can exaggerate, but close encounters with bacteria have a healing effect on one's fragmented experience of time. 
In modern cities, we're so alienated from natural rhythms and processes. But close encounters with bacteria and the kind of time frames that they occupy, waiting for the sourdough to rise, waiting for the kimchi to be ready, these close encounters, for me anyway, have an almost magically calming effect. Fermentation in a small but powerful way seems to be a kind of medium of reconnection with the rhythms and tempos of the natural world that we've so unfortunately lost. And then the third aspect is the sharing aspect of fermentation as another example of connection through bacteria. When people give ferments and cultures to each other, it's not just about sharing a physical substance or something to make food with. It also involves the sharing of knowledge and stories. Where did it come from? What is the history of what you're being given in this small pot? And in my experience, at least, these relationships and the stories and the exchanges are the basis of relationships that persist through time. In other words, the bacterial world, the world of microcosms, the huge majority of life which is invisible, has so much to teach us about time and sharing and connection. The Norwegian artist Eva Bakkerslet calls this kind of collaborative process social fermentation. And I think of the Human Cities Design Award, which we're here to celebrate, as a great example of social fermentation. The award celebrates creative processes and encounters that are often bubbling away in the corners of the mainstream economy, below the radar of the media, which celebrate the old and the large and the heavy. But now, by bringing these activities and people together, the award creates a healthy, living and vibrant atmosphere and a new time frame in which new ways of living can blossom and thrive. Through these relationships, fostered by the awards, we can develop the new knowledge, practices and indeed courage and commitment that will lead to broad-based change. Transformational change, I hope you will agree, is no longer a future prospect that we discuss as something we would like to see. It is happening now, accelerated and transported by the virus, but also the result of changes that have been bubbling up like a slowly fermenting product over many years. We are now leaving behind a development model of growth for its own sake. The extraction of natural resources is no longer an end in itself. The nurturing of biodiversity is a value and a priority for its own sake, not an extra on the bottom of a form to be ticked. On this new path, which I believe we are all beginning together, the collective well-being of both humans and non-humans is our shared priority. We're designing tools, objects, ways of working and institutions on this new path that respect the radical interdependence of all life. These awards are in that sense a celebration. We're designing a new way of being. 네, 새로운 디자인의 통찰력을 짚어주신 존 타카라님께 다시 한번 감사드립니다.